Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe if you are active users of social networks, you are aware of what a hashtag is, of course. And maybe you are aware of some of these uh, hashtag campaigns, as I uh, put on the title, examples of viral campaigns in support of discrimination situations. Fortunately, uh, using internet, we can help people in discrimination, discriminating situations. We can help people with who has been discriminated by other people. And these are some of the main uh, popular, most popular examples of these viral uh, non-discrimination non-discrimination campaigns, such as Me Too campaign, which was for the sexual abuse and harassment allegations in Hollywood uh, back in tw um, 2017. We also have Black Lives Matter, fight against racism and police brutality in the United States. Ableism, maybe you don't know about this. this is this is not one of the most popular, but it's also really interesting. Awareness of discrimination and stigma towards persons with disability. And also the body positiv positivity movement to promote body acceptance and fight discrimination based on physical reasons. So we will be having these uh, like two phases of the coin. We have like the bad phase of the discrimination situation that we were talking about. And we also have like the white phase or good phase be, uh, talking about like uh, yin and yang, you know, uh, black and white. We also have like the good phase of the coin uh, with this kind of hashtags to help people in this discrimination situation. So internet it's not always like the bad option sometimes and um very often is like the best option to fight this online discrimination well now uh we will we would be talking about gender based violence online so online gender based violence ranges from sexual harassment to the dissemination of intimate images without consent Social media are common platforms for, for the perpetuation of gender-based violence affecting the mental and emotional, emotional sorry, health of victims. So sexism in our current situation, I think, is one of the most um, social issues we are facing in our century, at least in Spain. Um, the majority of us are from Spain, so I, you know what I'm talking about. I'm sure that in the other countries also, um, I think that you are having like a debate or a discussion in this sexy society we are living um, on. So in the internet, it's exactly the same. So what happens on the streets happens Of course, you know, like the e sports. If you have a look uh, to these tournaments, the vast majority of contestants are men. Of course, um, um, there are a very few women who play professionally to this e sports. So, in this kind of gaming community, the discrimination for gender is like a um, huge reality and a huge problem. Uh, this keeps uh, this keeps occurring uh, today. And also we would have like these sexist, sexist comments and gender stereotypes, comments that reinforce her from gender stereotypes of belittled women because of their gender abound, both in online discussion and in media content such as news, opinion pieces and videos. If you have a look through some kind of um, debate or discussion in Twitter, you would be seeing like uh, people insulting women just for being women or your opinion doesn't matter at all because you are a woman or also attacking attacking them using um, sexual stereotypes um, with a discussion that it's maybe about football or it's maybe about the weather or it's maybe about sustainability. No matter what's the topic, sometimes the discussion always finish with a sexual comment or a sexy, sexism comment. Also, uh, we would be talking about doxing and digital violence, um, tactics such as doxing, which is 
posting personal information without consent are used to intimidate or punish women who express opinions online. So maybe you know about this, um, you may know about this, um, AI tools uh, such as FaceApp or Facetune in which you can change the face of a real person to the body of a non-real person generated by artificial intelligence. And uh, you can publish these pictures, these, of course, uh, non-real pictures, and uh, to harm the other people. In this case, uh, there are huge um, problems with the, the, the dissemination of pictures of, of naked women with the face of women that um, uh, actually exist. So this would be called doxing, in this case uh, using artificial intelligence, but could also be doxing, uh, just sharing uh, private videos or private pictures of people. Not sharing like to harm them, but just sharing just to comment with your friends or to show it to your boyfriend or to your girlfriend would be also a kind of gender-based violence, in this case, online. Of course, we will be talking about the digital gender the use of these technologies. I will develop better this part afterwards. Uh, of course, bias in artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence may reflect biases and prejudices due to the lack of diversity in training data. This can lead to discriminatory outcomes in areas such as hiring, lending, and justice systems. Um, maybe it's a GPT, which is one of the most popular AI tools uh, currently. Um, it's um, sometime before you use uh, ChatGPT to develop an essay, uh, the language always would be talking in in masculine uh, to men because in for instance in Spanish we do like a may uh, like a big difference between uh, words um, for women and words for men. We have like this uh, differentiation which is not in English, but we were like victims of this uh, differentiation that was not okay or properly prepared in chat GPT, for instance. And of course, low proportion of women in technology professions, the gender gap persists in technology careers with women, women underrepresented in leadership and software development roles. Um, some weeks ago, I attended um, I attended a lesson by a scientific uh, scientist in the University of Alicante, and she was talking that the rates of women studying technological careers are exactly the same since one uh, since 1992. So imagine that we are still victims of this um, big difference uh, between the proportion of men and women in these technology careers or professions. So uh, now the, the next topic I'd like to talk about is cyberbullying. Uh, for my students in, in primary education, we talked about this last year. We talked about bullying that or harassment that uh, would be like the continuous and permanent attack to people, in this case, to children at school. But now we will be talking about cyberbullying. That would be the use of technology to harass, threaten, embarrass, or humiliate a person. It can manifest itself through messages, posts, or social media, or the dissemination of private information. This type of harassment can have serious consequences on the mental and emotional health of victims and is growing problem in today's digital age. So not only... Uh, because of that, but also because all these real 
reasons, cyberbullying is a remain accessible indefinitely, uh, even after it has been removed, because you know that it's really difficult to uh, permanently remove something from the cloud. So imagine that if this is a, a harm, harmful content for you, so that, that would be really, really difficult to permanently remove it. Also, rapid and wide dissemination, 24-7 accessibility. Cyberbullying can occur at any time of the day or night as perpetrators and victims have constant access to digital devices and the internet. If we imagine a bullying situation when we were in at school, for instance, I'm I'm imagine a situation that occurred in my in my class when we were in primary education. This guy was attacking another uh, mate of us uh, back in back in primary school, and when when we uh, left school at two p.m., this harassment stopped. Now with cyberbullying, this harassment never stops, no matter if you are at school or if you are with your parents or with your family. This harassment can easily keep going, can easily keep harming children or harming people because you know that cyberbullying is the uh, typology um, for attack in children, but we also have moving, which would be uh, the same, but in uh, professional in professional content for adults. So um, this, any kind of harassment using uh, technological media is really, really difficult to stop. Diversity of forms can take many forms, such as hostile messages, defamatory posts, fake profiles, sharing images, doxing, and swatting notes. Psychological impact, the consequences of cyberbullying can be severe for the victim's mental health, including anxiety, depression, difficulty escaping. Victims may find it difficult to avoid contact. Uh, sorry, I'm going to move like this. Okay. Um, to avoid contact, avoid sorry, contact with their abuses due to the omnipresence of the internet and digital digital platforms, and of course challenges for intervention, identifying and sanctioning perpetrators of cyberbullying can be really really complicated. Uh, in terms of um, um, educational context for the teachers, the principal and everything, and also really difficult to identify and to stop also and even for the victims and um, their families too. Okay, so <clears throat> anti-discrimination and anti-harassment laws and regulations online. So, uh, do you think that there is, uh, that is there any kind of anti-harassment laws and regulations online? When I started preparing this module, I had the same question. And well, the reality is that we have some kind of uh, laws for this. At the European level, we of course have the GDPR. You may know about this. Um, ensures that victims have the right to have their personal data deleted from online platforms and services. And also the Directive on Privacy and Electronic Communication lays down rules on the security and confidentiality, confidentiality of electronic communications, including aspects related to cyberbullying. We are seeing that there is some kind of organisms that laws and, and rules um, this situation, but we don't have any specific um, laws for this. And this would help at least a little bit um, these victims of, of cyber bullying and harassment. And in national level, um, in Spain, we have the Spanish Penal Code that criminalizes harassment, including in harassment carried out through electronic or telematic means. In France, uh, um, we also have um, a specific law criminalizing cyber bullying, allowing the prosecution of online harassers, and also in United Kingdom, laws, laws such as Malicious Communications Act and the provision of harassment are all identify the harassers. It's really difficult to identify the bullies. The bullies. So um, no matter that we have all these laws, we will be still keep um, seeing this situation. But um, from my opinion and from my colleagues' opinion too, uh, who helped me preparing these contents, we think that uh, some of the um, um, initiatives or some of the activities to prevent these online harassments starts 
by digital education. So teaching young people about the importance of online respect and safe use of social need networks is fundamental to reduce these cyberbullying cases. Also, the school policies uh, or local policies, not like these big laws in Europe, in France, in United Kingdom, but also laws at school level or laws at a uh, local level, implement policies that promote a safe online environment. It's really important to encourage reporting of harassment. And finally, of course, emo emotional support, providing psychological support resources for both potential, vi potential victims and cyber aggressors. Uh, for my students from last year, I remember that we saw that in uh, severe cases of bullying, not cyber bullying, several causes of bullying, uh, it was really important too to have like this support, psychological support, not only for the victims, but also for the harassers and also for the attackers, because we uh they need to i mean they need to this uh emotional and psychological support to understand that what they did it's not the right thing to do so they need to solve like these issues in their heads and to become a better person at the end so now i would like to talk about the digital gap maybe You've talked about this. Um, you, you've um, you've heard about this. Sorry, or uh, the digital gap or digital divide. So this gap refers to the difference between people who have access to modern information and communication technologies, and those who do not. This gap covers not only the availability of access to the internet and digital devices, but also includes differences in the ability to use and benefit from these technologies effectively. So um, the digital divide, it's mm, just like the reflection of our current society. Um, we, of course, know that it's not the same um, being from a rich uh, neighborhood than uh, being born in a poor or uh, with a lower level of socioeconomic resources neighborhood. So we know this difference. So if we um, if we move this difference to the internet, to the e-world, to the um, digital world we are living in, we will be having the same difference and the same problems. So uh, this digital gap is not only for, from economical results, reasons, it's also for these three main reasons I prepare in this pyramid. So let's see. The first one is the access gap. This is like the most common one, the most easy to understand, which will be um, about difference in internet, access, in internet access and digital devices. Means that you don't have uh, enough economic resources, you don't have enough um, facility resources if you are from a rural area to even access a good um, a good um, mobile um, <clears throat> A good uh, phone, for instance, a good computer, um, you can even access a good Wi-Fi connection at your home. Uh, this is like the main uh, or the most common reason or the, the most common access, uh, most common divide, the access gap. And it also applies, uh, as I just said, to rural, uh, rural areas or um, um, ancient areas in which um, people cannot access these um, modern devices or people had that cannot access a proper digital connection or Wi-Fi connection. Then the second one would be the usage gap. Uh, differences in the effective use of technology. So now imagine that you have the resources, you have the money, you have the good internet facilities, you have the good Wi-Fi connection, and you have an iPhone, but you don't know and you have no idea how to use it. I mean, you can use it just to call uh, or you can use it just to take pictures, but you cannot use it to monitor your health. You cannot use it to have uh, profiles in social media. You cannot use it to, ed uh, to edit documents or PowerPoints. So you are having like um, 1,000 euros a telephone just to call and call and receive calls. So you are not making a good use of technology, of course, in this case, in because you don't know how to use it. This would be the case for the usage gap. Um, 
um, like one of the most affected collectives or groups uh, from this usage gap is the elderly people. For instance, my granny, which is uh, 20, eh, no, 82, sorry, and 82 years old, she has like, um, in, Sp in Spanish, we say it, fijo telephone that is like the old telephone that only has a connection at home so she has this phone she has not any kind of mobile so um she currently in spain she cannot access their uh, her bank account because the bank account is only available if you have a smartphone or if you have a computer and a wi-fi connection at home so to take her money she needs to ask for an appointment at the bank, go there, talk with the worker there, and finally check the bank account. So an easy or um, former easy process has turned into a difficult, a really difficult situation for elderly people. Um, of course, another of the, another group really really damaged from this gap is also uh, people with some kind of disability disability, uh, um, intellectual disability, of course, or physical or sensory, new, modern, um, digital, digital as of this um, second kind of gap, the Usha's gap. Usha's gap. Um, landlines, thank you. <laughs> Uh, now we have the skills gap, disparity in the ability to create digital content effectively. So now imagine that you have the money to have an iPhone, you have some basic uh, knowledge to use this iPhone, you know how to use Instagram, you know how to use um, um, WhatsApp, you know how to use Facebook, but you are a teacher and you need to develop a content a content or a presentation using Canva, which is a presentation editor and a um, graphic editor. And you have no idea how to use this application with your phone. Now you will be part of the third group of the skills gap um, situation that you don't have enough skills to create digital content effectively for, for our... For our, in our field, in educational field, this creation of content, it's really important. It's one of the main features of our work, of our job daily. So we will be victims uh, in this case of the skills gap. Uh, this can be translated um, to any kind of field, to any kind of creation of content. Uh, in this case, I put the example of um, education because um, it's the majority of my students here and I'm also an educator. But you can imagine the same situation for the skills gap for any kind of field, any kind of work or job. Okay, so now um, how do we avoid, how do we finish, how do we erase this digital gap? Well, I think, and you may agree with this, that the first kind of gap, the access gap for economical reasons or facility or uh, rural, rural area reasons is really difficult to end, is really difficult to erase because we don't have enough resources to buy smartphones to everyone, of course, to buy computers, to buy televisions, but we can erase or at least mitigate the second and third kind of uh, gap, the skills and the use gap how with a good and proper digital education uh, the some of the features of this proper digital education would be the early awareness digital education from an early age insist vital skills for online sa safety also preventing cyber attacks training uses to identify threats protects against cyber crime and online ethics digital ethical standards cultivate responsible behavior in virtual in virtual environments so since the beginning of the of the session we, we have been talking about uh, discrimination gender violence that are problems that has have been occurring in our in our society from very, very years ago. However, we've been talking about them using a technological and digital approach and they um, 
path or the way to solve this problem, to solve or to face this discrimination and harassment situation, starts with a good digital education, with a proper digital education. If we educate our children in not to harass people or not to insult people in Twitter, if we educate them to debate, to read, to uh, reflect, to reckon about what they are saying in social media, then we will we have a better situation, a better situation and a better society, far better than the one we are having with this polarized, polarized, uh, polarization of society and also polarization and, and sometimes kind of a really, really difficult situation in social media. So this solution, this solution starts with a uh, early digital education and of course uh, educating our children in online ethics that it's uh, really, really interesting to and really important to train them. So to conclude our session, our first session of module number six, um, I would like to um to outline some of the main uh, features we will be talking about. That uh, the first one would be awareness raising and empowerment. Uh, reaching awareness about online discrimination and violence is crucial. For this, this wonderful initiative, Inspiring the Minds, is really crucial, and we are part of the process. Uh, because raising awareness and raising uh, worries about di di this discrimination make people wake, make people act to improve our world, of course. Continuing, continuing education and training, ongoing digital education is essential to change behaviors and attitudes. Schools and communities must provide ongoing training and support. Not only schools, but also the families, for sure, uh, parents, um, relatives at all are the main responsible the main are uh, responsible for this digital education in their children in the time they are at home from the schools from um organism from uh public administration we can work for this but at the end at the end of the day the parents the family have the main responsibility to their children and to their uh future society too collaboration and responsibility. It is everyone's responsibility to work together to create safe online environments free from discrimination. And finally, access to resources, ensuring uh, um, access to support, counseling and guidance resources for for victims is essential to counteract the best do and not do this. We can work slowly, day by day, um, foot by foot, to um, improve our world. So for this, um, need to happen, or at least not be part of the attacks, not to be part of the harassment, but uh, helping them um, to improve and to heal, of course, the uh, consequences of this a uh, horrible situation of these situations of discrimination that we have been talking about since the beginning. So thank you very much for your attention. Uh, this is only like um, uh, a drop in an ocean uh, in this uh, broad world that digital world that we are living on. But um, I think that this with with this um, short session of today and the rest of the course. We are part of the process. We are part. We are part of the improvement of our world and society. Thank you very much. You have here are my contact details in case you want to contact me. I will be glad to talk to every one of you. Thank you very much. Thanks a lot, uh, Rosabella, for this uh, very interesting uh, presentation. Uh, I myself have some question, but I would like to leave the floor for others to ask. But before before the question, I would like to highlight something uh, that we have like a follow up session. This will be in the 26th uh, of mm -hmm. uh, March, so next week. Uh, and this will be again from 12 to 1 o'clock. So one hour yes. session just to follow up um, uh, this discussion. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so um, maybe. Uh, uh, People can ask questions if there is any.
Okay. Maybe I can jump with a question from my side. Uh, thanks, Hanan. Uh, from my side, uh, you try to put in your uh, presentation like measure how we can prevent or how we can educate people not to do so, such such type of discrimination. My question is how we deal with such discrimination if it's happening. Like if you are uh, a girl or female and then um, you post on social media something and then you find um, like aggressive reaction from people against you as a, as a gender inequality. Mm -hmm. What we yes. should do in this mm -hmm. case? Of course, that was like the last part I I talked about in the conclusion. Uh, in the conclusion um, part, that we we I was talking about that um, we cannot change the world doing it like this. Uh, we uh, have to work really hard uh, to improve it. Uh, to train our our children, to train our our um, our students at school. But if this bad situation happened, um, because they will happen, of course, it's really important that we have located this network of contact, this collaboration um, with other fields, for instance, it's really important to collaborate from the educational field to the psychological field to improve the psychology and the emotional um, health of these victims of this situation. And we also need to uh, locate these resources that we can um, use in case of the situation happens. However, if we are facing like personally um, violence or um, verbal or physical even violence situation, I think that um, we have to be brave, of course, <laughs> and um, we have to um, look for help because People, you know, the world is plenty of good people who will be helping us, and I think like an uh, like a um, uh, very good advice is that we are not alone here. So um, we have to um, let people help us. You know, sometimes we try to be like the bravest in the world, but we are not. We are not superheroes. Heroes. We are not Batman. We are not Superman. We are pers. We are people. We are persons, and uh, we have to let people help us so if we are victims of one of these situations i mean no I, i'm not talking about these um really severe severe cases of violence physical violence i'm talking about daily um discrimination uh, situation that can happen to any of us we need to uh talk we need to uh, talk out loud about this with friends, with family, with relatives, with uh, professional edu uh, psychological help to, to let people help us and to be part of this process, to be part of this change, I think. Mm -hmm. And from your point of view, do you think that this, this process of education, try to educate people, this will take time, right? If there is any mm -hmm. way to facilitate it, to make it very fast, since, you know, this uh, rapid progressive uh, flourish of this AI tools. So it, I think it can really harm people. Mm -hmm. So if there is any way to, to make this education process a bit faster, Yes, I think that the way to make it the faster possible is to uh, consider it as a transversal process, as an um, interdisciplinary process, not only um, 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 uh, like a, a long process of um, education, but to consider it part of the main curricula, to consider it a part of the main subjects at school, at mm. high schools, at universities, to um, consider it like a, um, like transversal, uh, with a transversal approach, uh, with a, a interdisciplinary approach and a collaborative approach. So using this approach, we will be like um, doing the job and the work 
faster than if we do it alone, if we do it like um, a separate process. So we need to integrate technologies and educational technology and technological education too um, as part of the main curricula of the main areas of current education. And who should make the push? Is it the university? Is it the government? Is it people? Mm -hmm. who, yeah, who, who should lead this this um, this revolution? Mm -hmm. Well, I think that at least in the educational field, um, sometimes we have these like really, really um, digital educational schools. We have these uh, really fancy schools with all these kind of initiatives, but at the same time, we have like this traditional old ugly school. Imagine like the school that we see in, in some cartoons even. So we have like these two faces of the coin again. So the solution for this is like administration and authorities have the lead to uh, be the leaders of this part, at least in terms of an administrative uh, part. Um, also, we can have like uh, individual leaders of this change, individual uh, enthusiasts of educational technology and technological education. But if we consider it as a transversal process, I think that the leaders and the process needs to start with the um, institutions and authorities. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. Yep. Thank you. This I think this is all from my side. I don't know. Other have any questions? Anyone here uh, would you like to ask any question? Uh, I can ask uh, a question, Tamar. Yeah, know? please help. Yeah, uh, yes. yeah. Uh, Rosabel, uh, can you please tell me uh, what is uh, your or your institution's current research about these uh, topics? Uh, what are you doing? Is there any uh, specific project or is there any current policy or regulations for preventing this kind of uh, inequalities? See, yes, yes, of course, yes. Um, at least from currently at the University of Alicante, well, um, here is my, my colleague, Veronica, that uh, is also working with us in this uh, project funded by um, the regional government of the Valencian community, which is our region, in which we are uh, we are um, researching the um, effects in the emotional health of children of the um, artificial intelligence uh, education and artificial intelligence tools. So this would be one of the main projects we have currently at our institution at the University of Alicante Faculty of Education. Uh, this would be at least least um, of our university and for these schools I know that um, at, um, in a regional level we are also having initiatives to make all the teachers um, competent in technology because in the next session we will be talking about the digital competencies so I know that there is a big effort for our Valencian region to um, make all the teachers and all the educators competent in digital tools to train, uh, train children in digital tools too. Mm -hmm. well, good works, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. So like you need you need someone to lead. You need someone to push. So <laughs> this is good. Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. So I don't know any any more question from audience. If you couldn't speak, you can just write the question in the chat. Okay. If not, maybe I would like to thank uh, you, Isabella, very much again. Uh, see mm -hmm. you next week on, I said, yes. Tuesday or uh, Wednesday. I didn't remember, but 26th of March. Yes, Wednesday yeah. again. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Wednesday again, 26th of March, yeah. Uh, sorry, ma and... sorry uh, uh, Tuesday. Tuesday, yes. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, people who are attending this uh, this meeting, they don't need to register for, uh, for the next mm -hmm. event. I will send them an email with, uh, uh, with a Zoom link. Actually, it will be the same Zoom link. Yeah, okay, wonderful. Yeah, mm -hmm. It will be the same. I will do the reminder yeah. to um, on my students and yes. we will be keep working. <laughs> Good. Super. Thanks a lot and see you. Uh, thank you very week. much, Tamer, as usual. Bye. Bye bye. Thank you, Rosalind. Bye. Thank you, Have everyone. Nice day, everyone. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs>